All right, good morning, f Facebook friends. I'm excited to be with you here. We're going to talk about this struggle to save money and how to overcome the struggle to save money. You know, I think unless you're born into you know real serious wealth, all of us have to deal with this struggle to save money. And it is not easy, and it is especially difficult in places like Southern California, where the cost of living is just so much greater than it is other places. And this, this struggle becomes, as the years go by, you know, when you're young, you don't really worry about saving that much. You worry more about, you know, getting a nice place to live and, you know, have some nice things and get your job and all that kind of stuff. But then once you start to get settled, and especially as soon as you start to have kids or you have a family, it, um, you know, your expenses start to magnify. And so there's this, there's this juggling act that we have to do. And the juggling act is, okay, how do I provide a, you know, a, the, the best quality of life that I can for my family, you know, and, and every decision, like, you know, how much money do we spend on food? I mean, you know, are we going to have steaks? Or are we going to have hamburger? Or what are we going to eat? And, you know, where's the balance there? And then how much money do we spend on clothes? And how much money do we spend on our car? And how much money do we spend? Because we want to be in the best neighborhood and we want to have the best schools and all of that. And so, you know, the reality is, is that what most of us do is we have all these struggles and we're trying to make all these decisions and we're trying to provide as best we can for the lives of not only ourselves, but our families and that. And then the reality is the saving part is the last part of the plan. And it's like, okay, I need to do the, and we literally think in those terms, I need to live in this neighborhood. I need to have these kinds of things for our life, for our family. And as we go down our knees, let's guess what the last need is. The last need is what's left and how much can I save? And I'll save that. And in most cases, you know, the sad reality is, and we'll go over some of these numbers is, you know, 80% of the people, there's none left. There's nothing left. Yeah, you know, I'm going to share with you before I get into this. There's a, there's a great book called The Richest Man in Babylon. I think the book was written in the 30s. And great story, but he makes a really important suggestion. And he says, make saving first. And the suggestion is, is you save 10%. Great suggestion, 100% believe and support it, but how many people do you know, the first thing they do is they pay themselves and they put money to save and they put 10%. It's not very many people, it's very few, and it's really, really difficult. And that's why we're having this webinar, why we're gonna have this conversation, is I'm gonna share with you how to overcome this struggle to save money. Because it's probably, I think it's you know, the biggest financial struggle we all have, and without overcoming it, then what? Are we just like financially screwed? Is it, you know, we're gonna struggle to the day we die? And sadly, in most cases, that's exactly what's happening. You know, I think one of the biggest things I've learned in my life is everything is about a formula, a system, a recipe, whichever way you wanna look at that. I like to say life is like a recipe. I don't really cook very well. But I've learned if you have a recipe and you follow the recipe, you can turn out okay. You can eat decent food. You can have some pretty good meals. And after you get a little bit of practice with those recipes, you, get, you can get really good. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to show you a recipe. It's a simple recipe. It's a simple formula that you can follow that is going to end the struggle to save money ever again because you will know the recipe and you just fall and it's a pretty simple form as we go through this. So let's, let's walk through this process. Here are some of the big challenges of, that we all deal with is impulse or emotional buying. Now there are little impulse buying like things like donuts and ice cream and things like that but our impulse buying and our emotional buying really can grow well beyond that to meaning you know, buying cars that are way more expensive. I and mean, we all have our vices, man. I, you know, I'm blown away when I see how much money, um, you know, some of these designer purses go for, and the jewelry, and then, and so on. But the, all that is impulse or emotional buying. 
the financial discipline, and I talked about that financial discipline, that's, you know, with that idea, that, that simple strategy of save 10% first. But financial discipline is having a budget and having the discipline to save first. And financial literacy is how to build wealth. What is this process? So many people are either in one or two categories. Either one, they've just given up. They don't save, they don't worry about it, they don't have a retirement plan, they've just given up. Or two, they're relying on a 401k or IRA and they're plugging away as much as they can and it's not really that much and they have no clue where it's going to end up. And the, I'm telling you where it's going to end up is going to be ugly. Next is inflation. The gap between the rich and the poor is getting wider and wider. I'm going to show you those numbers. And here's the key reason is inflation works really well to build wealth if you're on the asset side. And if you're not, it just makes life harder and harder. And so it's understanding how to swim downstream with inflation instead of upstream against inflation. And we need an autopilot retirement plan, and that's what we're going to talk about, how to go through this. And when I say autopilot, here's what I mean. What I love about pensions is I wish in this country that it was required that pensions, I would totally change, I would make our social security system into a pension system so that everybody that plugged into this had the same benefit of, of you know, if you work for the government, you know, if you're, a, you know, you work for, let's say, you're a police officer or a teacher or something like that, they've got a fantastic formula for pensions, and you retire, and you're getting anywhere from 75 to 90 percent of your payroll for life. I mean, it's pretty incredible. But if you don't work there, then what? And for 90 percent of the people, it's pretty much. Well, let me tell you, 80 percent are pretty much screwed. There's 10 percent that'll be able to, you know, to uh, get by. But we need this same kind of autopilot retirement plan for everyone. But, you know, Social Security is, is a miserable failure because of the way the government has set it up. So that's not going to happen. So I'm going to share with you how we can solve this and create an autopilot. And again, what I mean by autopilot is it doesn't require you to save money. Because the sad reality is I know these other issues are going to overwhelm 90% of the people. So I'm going to show you how we can have this autopilot retirement program. But here's where it all starts. There are three questions that we need to know the answers to. All right, here are the three questions we have to address. Number one is what will your expenses be at the time of your retirement? We know what your expenses are today. We can do a quick analysis. You can get that analysis done on our website, on the Markman Wealth Academy. Uh, dot com website go to the wealth calculator and it'll crop, calculate that out for you where we take let's say your expenses are five thousand are you going to retire you know 10 15 20 25 30 years whatever that number is and basically what we want to do is an inflation adjusted uh expense to give you an idea we can do this analysis in greater detail with something we do call we call financial freedom analysis but anyway number one we need to know roughly what your expense is going to be at time of retirement number two is how will we create this income, this investment income to cover that expenses, because that's what retirement is, that's what financial freedom is, is when your passive income or your investment income exceeds your expenses, so you in fact can retire, because basically what you're doing is you're replacing your job income with investment income. And number three is, when will you have this very necessary investment income? What's the timeline? How long does it take? And I'm gonna share with you the path on how we can get the answers to these questions now because this is what financial literacy is all about. You have to know now. You need to know what to do now, not 20, 30 years ago and just hope. All right, but let's examine the wealth distribution crisis in America today. 1% of the people control 35% of the wealth. The next 4% control 28. So 5% control 63% of the wealth. The next 5% control 40%. So 10% of the people basically control 80% of the wealth. That, and again, my point is nothing to do with politics. My point has only to do with mathematics, is this is a problem. The quality of life and the number of people that are able to retire, and this is why I say autopilot retirement is critical. 
because this number just keeps getting bigger and bigger and this situation gets worse and worse. And the reason is because people don't have the financial discipline, the financial literacy, they don't have the path how to get here. And that's why I've created the, the Wealth Academy is to address this because this is really a crisis situation. Now, we take another 10%, we have 12% here. So we're basically 20% of the people control 90% of the wealth roughly. You look at the bottom 80% are splitting 12% of the wealth. This is a serious crisis. I'm gonna show you the solution and help you with this because it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't even need to be close to this way. And there's a real world solution, but the key to that real world solution is overcoming the struggle to save money. As long as people rely on their dependency is on saving money, this is never gonna get better. And most people believe there's no other way. I'm going to show you the other way. Why the, this is why I wrote this book and I titled it Why the Rich Stay Rich and the Poor Stay Poor. And when you read Why the Rich Stay Rich and the Poor Stay Poor, it doesn't sound like an investment book, you know, or a wealth book. It sounds more like a philosophy book. But here's why I titled that because here's what I, coming from no money and no financial education, you know, as a, you know, on both sides of my family, the families were full-blown poor. They were not like middle class, they were full-blown poor. And you know, the, the dream in our family was to get to middle class, which is when, one of the things that you know, my father was able to accomplish, which was great. Um, but here's the number one reason, is what we believe. Most of you, if you're watching this, that's a great sign because you at least you, know, you have the thought and you believe and have the hope that things can be better. But I want you to think about the people that you know that aren't watching this, that will never want to watch this. And the only way possible they're going to watch it is if you push them, if you implore them, say, look, you can become financially secure. Your family can become financially secure. And you can even retire and even become wealthy without saving money. Because they don't believe that. See, without belief, all is lost. There is no hope. So we need to get people to believe. Number two is belief is great. Hope is great. But without know-how, we're not going anywhere. We need to know the process. And that's what I'm going to here to, to teach you, is to show you exactly what to do. And number three is we got to take action. If we're going to take action, you know, if we just stay in one place, we're not going anywhere. So what do you believe? And my favorite verse in the Bible, according to your faith, be it unto you. And it's my favorite because I've just seen it lived in society in so many ways. Everything revolves around what we believe. And so according to what your faith, meaning according to what you believe, will come to pass. If you believe you're going to be poor, you're going to stay poor. If you believe you can only be middle class, you're going to stay middle class. I want you to open your mind to believing you can be seriously wealthy. There's zero doubt in my mind. I mean, if you, basically, if you are at a kind of a middle income level of 50,000 or more, you can be, 50,000 or more a year, you can be seriously wealthy. That, how many people are in that category? Now, not everybody, but a lot of people. And even if you're below that, we've come up with a solution to help get you to a place where you can be really financially comfortable. Maybe not, not, maybe not seriously wealthy, but retire comfortably. All right, we're gonna go some of these numbers rather quickly here. 21% of the people in this country do not even have a savings account. 28% have a savings account with no money. Basically half the people have no money saved, zero. Only 14% have 10,000 or more dollars in their savings account. That shows you how poor people are at saving money in this country. In their retirement accounts, it's not, it's not much better. 39.8% of the people have a retirement account with no money in it. Another 38.9, another basically 40% have less than one year's annual salary in their savings account. So if your annual salary, let's say it's 50 grand, and you have 40000 in your retirement account, and you retire, how long do you think that's going to last? Not long, right? Probably not a year before you're out of money and you got to go back to work. Let me share with you 
the number one problem, and I alluded to this before, was the inflation factor. Why inflation will crush your 401k or IRA? Let's say you're 32 years old, you're starting your 401k, you put $1,000 in there, you start saving $400 a month. The national average is about $200 a month that's saved. But let's say it's $400. We're going to go double that, be a little bit more optimistic. In 30 years, if you have a net return of 5%, and the reason I say net is after the cost of your um, management fees, because these 401k IRA management companies are not free, your total lifetime savings after 30 years is 337000 A lot of people think it's a lot of money. It's not a lot of money today and it's sure as heck not going to be a lot of money in 30 years. If your expenses are 5000 a month, inflation 3%, in 30 years you have expenses that have grown to 12000 more than double. Number one mistake people make is this area is underestimated budget. And this is why on our three questions, this is the first one, you got to know this number. You have to have an idea. Whatever your expenses are today, I want you to think about this question. How many of your bills do you think are going to stop going up? How many of them? See, everything start, continuously goes up and costs more. In 30 years, your expenses are going to be more than double. Are you ready for that? And that gets to the point of, do you have a solution to create that income? Annualize 145,000. So we simply divide it out, 337 divided by 145, and you have 2.3 years before you're broke. This is where 80% of the people are. This is why financial planners came up with the 4% rule. And the idea of 4% is let's pull out 4% a year if you take 4% of your life savings over 25 years, that's 100%. But look what 4% is a year. It's $1,125 a month. Can you imagine $1,125 a month? Let's throw $1,200, $1,300 a month Social Security. In 30 years, your overhead's $12,000, and be combined between Social Security and your 401k, you've got, let's call it $2,500. You're grossly short of being a practice. This is where roughly 80% of the people are. This is a terrible thing. My point is, saving in a 401k is not going to get you there. there. Here are the four major flaws of 401k and IRA. Number one is it requires far more to be saved than the average, and not just the average, the majority of the people can simply save. Here's my point to this and why I get so frustrated with this and so aggravated with our you know, with our government, our social uh, belief systems is that the 401k and the IRA was designed to provide a retirement solution for people. But it doesn't meet the obvious challenge of the inability to save. It's a failure and a fraud, in my opinion, from the get-go. Next. People can't access it. They can't access their money until 59 and a half without a severe penalty. So you get laid off, you get sick, you have a severe crisis in your life, you want to access your money, the government's going to penalize you severely. Why? It's your money. Next is it doesn't provide any alternative income until 59 and a half. If you're a millennial, you should not be thinking in terms of retiring at 59 and a half or 62 or 65. We can get you there way sooner than that, more like 44, 45, 47, somewhere in that neighborhood. 15 to 18 years is really doable if you know what to do, but not with a 401k or an IRA. Even if you're doing a great job saving, there's no, you can't touch, you can't, Touch the money, you can't get the income out. 59 and a half is as soon as possible. We need a system where we can get some money now, get some alternative income now to make your quality of life better today, to help you with your children today, and have that money keep growing and growing. So at time of retirement, when you reach that financial security, you've been getting help along the way. And then, you know, whether it's 45, 55, or what, you know, 65, and you exit the game. And 401k upon withdrawal, you pay the full personal income tax rate. All right, the solution is we start moving toward the 
the economic benefits of real estate. There are five economic benefits, and here's what I mean by five economic benefits. You're making money five different ways. And let me sh share with you, what we're doing is we're magnifying your wealth growth exponentially. Number one is the leverage factor. Here's what that basically means. Is you're making money not only in your money that you put down into the property, but you're making money on the bank's money that they've loaned you. Number two is the mortgage pay down. Every time you make a mortgage payment, roughly a third of your mortgage payment is principal reduction, which is essentially like putting money in the bank. It's a forced savings. And my point is, it's like a pension. It's a forced savings, because every time you write that mortgage check, you're saving money. Number three is the rental cash flow. If you have rental, rents basically go one way, they go up. In 2008, we learned a powerful lesson. Stocks collapsed 50 to 60%, real estate properties collapsed 50%, and rents either went up or basically went sideways. In 2008, 2009, demand for rent skyrocketed because all these people were losing houses and rents actually went up. Number four is tax benefits. Real estate has preferred tax status over any other investment. You know, they've modified some of the write-offs on your home as far as you know, uh, the home you live in, but they've actually further enhanced the tax write-offs on investment real estate. Real estate, investment real estate was already tax advantaged over every asset class. Now it's even, the gap is, now it's even wider. I mean, it's immense over every other investment. You need to understand that and how that works. And number five is appreciation. Everyone, realtors, consumers only talk about what is appreciation. But that's only one of the five ways you're making money. Now let's quantify that in dollars and cents. Let's say you put 25000 into a retirement account or into a stock account versus buying a $450,000 property. Now before I go any further, where do you think you're going to make more money? $25,000 in stock? $25,000 buys you $25,000 stock or $25,000 buys you $450,000. Look at the multiple. It's 18 times greater. You've magnified your wealth growth. This is why I call it exponential wealth growth. You've magnified your dollars 18 times. That's a huge, huge advantage. Let's say you get 5% after management fees, but in real estate, only 4 California real estate has averaged 7.3% return for the past 50 years. So 4% is almost half that. So this is super conservative. Look at the growth. 5% equals 1250. 4% equals 18,000. You know, I saw an article in Money Magazine the, the other day, and it said, is it better to invest in stocks or real estate? And here's what it said. It did this basic analysis. It said, well, over the last 50 years, the stock market, the Dow, has averaged about 8%, and real estate on a national level is out. There's 5%. Eight's greater than five, so then we should obviously be in stocks. Well, here are five greater than four, but which way do you think you're making more money? And we're only talking about two of the economic benefits so far. Real estate blows away the stock. It's not even close, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Number three is the mortgage pay down. Now, if you're making your mortgage payment, as I said, about a third of it is principal reduction. But what if you were to rent your house? Well, who's then making the rent, making that payment? It's all profit for you because the tenant's making it. Number four is cash flow. Now, again, if you're, you know, if it's your home, most people aren't collecting rent. But I say most because a lot of people now are doing Airbnb on their and renting rooms in their house. I, I'm amazed at the number of people that are doing that. And number five is tax benefits is you have the tax write-offs on your home, on your real estate, and this is not showing the tax benefit on investment real estate. We add it all up, look at the gap. Money Magazine just said the stock market did better because the growth rate was superior. Does that look superior to you, 1250 to 32,000? Don't look superior to me. Look at the annual compounded return. Your $25,000 compounded return, 163%. Why? You need to understand why. Because of the multiples. Look, you got 18 times one, plus you're making money all these different ways. You add it up, it's 32 times more. How can you, how can you get there in those the retirement accounts? This is how you get there. It's not through the retirement account. Now, here are the life struggles that we solve. Number one is 
you are creating massive wealth without saving money. You're living your life. It's autopilot. This is what we need because of the difficulty in trying to create the best quality of life in every regard for our family. We need this autopilot plan. We've got intrinsic wealth growth. Your home is a money-making machine. Next is we need to know how do we take this money-making machine and convert it into income today. So many of you have bought properties in the last five, six, seven years and have accumulated serious wealth, serious equity. I mean, 200, 500,000, six, 700,000, I mean, four to 600,000 is super common. That's a lot of money. And you can take that money and turn it into income. But most of the people have a half a million dollars in equity. They're not getting any income. They have no idea what to do, how to create it. We need a strategy on how to turn this wealth building machine into a alternative income machine. And number three is we want to leave a legacy of wealth through your heirs so that when you leave this planet, your heirs are, they just ride the wave that you've built up. And with a plan, and when you know, see the reason we worry about money is an uncertainty. We don't know what we're doing. We're just saving and hope. If you're saving and hope, are you? Let me tell you what goes with hope. What goes with hope is worry, because you're hoping it's working out. How you end the worrying is the certainty of knowing the path. We're going to end the worry about money because you're not going to have to, and I want you to think about this. If you know exactly what to do, how to reach financial security, how to reach wealth, how to provide a legacy of wealth to your kids without ever saving a nickel, and you know exactly what to do, how, what is that going to do your money works? All of that is real, is possible. It's what we're doing every day. Go to Mark One Wealth Academy. Go to the website, get the free ebook. Sign up, you're gonna learn more. It's gonna go through this, you're gonna learn, you know, this is just kind of a brief portion of what you're gonna get in there, but it's getting into greater details. I want, the first part is to understand the dynamics of how to overcome the struggle to save money through exponential wealth growth because it's intrinsic within the real estate. We need to, you need to understand those dynamics, but the second part is you have to get your how to become rich plan. Life's like a recipe. Do you have the recipe? Here's the recipe. I'm gonna need this how to become rich is the, this plan is the recipe. It's step by step by step by step. When you go through this, you see the plan, you're gonna get the answers to those three big questions. That's part of the plan. You're gonna know exactly how you're gonna get there and when you're gonna get there without saving money. It's autopilot, that's the plan. All right, I'm near the end here. Um, before I sign off here, is, is there, do we have any questions? If you have any questions, you know, uh, shoot us an email. You can see you know, my personal email, my direct email there at mpray.m1m.com. There's a phone number, you can give us a call. Uh, Go on the website, get the ebook. If you want to get this How to Become Rich plan, you'll get a request in there. You know, send in, sign up for the request for the How to Become Rich plan, and we'll talk about customizing a plan. Okay, I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're a runner. We can start with that process. But if you're a homeowner, you're crazy not to get this plan because we can get you on a path in a hurry to become not just financially secure, not just retirement, but to create some real serious wealth. Have a great weekend. I've enjoyed being with you here today and I look forward to seeing you next week.